tena kata kato ki te tau te kufaia ko promia rawa ko hakurangi o ku maunga, ko puni u rawa ko waiapu o ku awa, ko waikato manio puto rawa ko Ngāti Prau o ku iwi, ko Ngāti Pare Te Kawa rawa ko Ngāti Hene Pare o ku hapu, ko Manga Toto rawa ko te rāpi o ku marae, ki te tau te kupāpa, ko Ahe Pākia, o Māwa Tifuna no Inland Scotland, ko Waitu Kahirangi no Kinta o Toku Ingoa. And um, yes, Kai is my mother. <laughs> uh, my name is Angel. I always say I'm mum's favourite daughter. It doesn't matter that I'm her only daughter. I am her favourite. <laughs> um, I currently, um, as I said, I currently work for Tara Matatini. I previously worked for Tirinango Kirikirido, and I'm going to be sharing a project that I was a part of when I worked with them. <coughs> and it was called. <laughs> It's called um, An Exploration of Taiohi Māori, Rites of Passage. And what we did is we talked to whānau Māori and community stakeholders about what they thought were rites of passage for Māori teenagers in contemporary society and what they thought was in the community that helped the Taiohi go through that cha those changes in a healthy and positive way. The project was led by Tūrunga o Kirikiro, which is an urban Māori authority based in Hamilton. They provide a variety of community services. They're a kaupapa Māori organisation. They have mental health, social, as well as AOD services, services from PEP all the way up to Pākehi. Um, and we did the project in collaboration with Te Hauwara o Ngāti Hawa, which is an iwi-based um, health provider, and they're based in Waharoa. And the project was funded by the Health Research Council. And um, Tūrunga o Kirikiriro has a research unit called Pōturanga Ho, and these are the other team members or who participated in the project. Um, Miri Bowser is the CEO of Tūrunga o Kirikiriro and she led the project. Dr Michelle Levy was the lead writer. Kiri Thompson was the manager of Pōturanga Ho for the majority of the project. I worked as a research assistant on the project. Ariana Warner was a research assistant, and Matobai Hariro, who spoke in yesterday's Whakatau, he was, he's a kaumatua at Tūrunga Kirikiriro, and he provides cultural support to Pōturunga Ho, as well as all the other services at Tūrunga Kirikiriro. We also had support from Professor Helen Walker Barnes, and as well as a researcher called Anna Scanlon. So today I'm just going to give a bit of background about the project, share some of the findings, and then talk about the conclusions of the study. So her background. So a really simple explanation of rites of passage. Uh, rites of passage are there, there are ritual events and experiences that mark a person's transition from one status to another. And so we were interested in what are the events that Māori Taiohi go through that help them go from child and adolescence into adulthood. So we asked Bano and community stakeholders that, and as I said before, we asked them what's in the community that helps them go through that in a healthy and positive way. Um, our, we carried out our study in a specific area, and we, we defined our participants as urban and rural. And um, we had our urban participants came from Hamilton City, and the rural ones came from the catchment area of Te Hauro Ngāti Hawa. So we had our, our rural ones came from Morinsville, Waharo, and near Cambridge. We had um, whānau and community stakeholders from urban and rural. So we had rural whānau, rural community stakeholders, urban whānau, urban community stakeholders. And the type of whānau we got had in the study is we looked for whānau that we could have three generations and they had to have at least one teenager aged between 13 and 18. And our community stakeholders were people who worked with communities and could possibly influence policy that affects whānau. And we used a technique called photo voice. A real simple explanation of photo voice is you ask people questions and they answer them by taking photos. And then you, they come and they share your, their photos with you and you talk to them about their photos. The benefits of a technique like photo voice are it gives people an opportunity to re reflect and think about what's going on in the community, to help open dialogue, as well as influence policy makers. 
so the findings. Now every, like we had community stakeholders and we had Fano, and each Fano and each community stakeholder, we asked them to take um, 10 photos. And within the Fano, we asked that at least every Fano member took at least one photo that they could talk about and share when we talked to them again. And all the coordinator they said is grouped under these five headings. And each of these five headings have sub themes. And there's, so overall, there was over 100 photos. Today, I'm just going to go through, give a little explanation about what each of the things mean, and then show an example of one of the photos that our participants have taken. So the major themes are Fano, intergenerational communication, meaningful participation, education, and indicators of our adulthood. So Fano, everybody thought Fano was important, and particularly our Fano. I thought it was important that Taiohi had the opportunity to interact with all the different generations of their families. If you look at the rural Fano, a lot of them either lived in the same house, on the same section, or within walking distance of each other. Whereas some of our urban Fano, they didn't have whakapapa to where they were living, but they had wider extended Fano who had moved to the same city. So they felt that they were at home because they did have access to the extended whānau. So some of our whānau didn't have that access to extended whānau maybe because they didn't live in the same place or because of a breakdown in relationships. Mm -hmm. But what they tried to do is they tried, they fostered whānau-like relationships with other people in their communities. And so under this we had um, the importance of having access to whānau, having supportive relationships, um, cultural resources, cultural connection, and celebrating milestones with your family. So whānau was about a sense of belonging. This is one of the photos that was taken by our participants. It shows um, the mother and her daughters. And she talked about how the way she's embracing her daughters in this photo is actually how the symbolic of how she embraces all of her children. She likes to hold them close and to protect them. And she talked about how sometimes they may think she's being overbearing, but she'll always be that way because she's their mother. And she talked about the importance of wanting to keep um, a <coughs> dialogue with her children, being able to talk so that they felt that they could talk to her about anything. And particularly with her daughter, she talked about how the importance of being, you know, understanding that they are th th about the photos hangata, but as they're going into puberty and, and hoping that her daughters will be able to talk to her about anything. Um, a lot of these themes, these major things, are all interwoven. So we've got intergenerational communication, which is strongly related to Fano. And when they were talking about intergenerational communication, it was about the transmission of knowledge and it was about the sustainability of culture and identity. They talked about role models, again, cultural connection, supportive relationships, particularly with kaumātua, and um, the importance of marae, as well as roles of succession and building confidence. This photo was taken by one of our whānau, and it was at their marae when they're bringing up the hāni. And they talked about the marae as a place where Taiohi could learn her first hand hands on experience about their culture, as well as helping the Taiohi so that you know they saw roles role modelled and they saw examples of it and they would know it when it was their time to replace people as they got older. Also talked about on the marae um, learning skills about how Different practicals like preparing kai, as well as the importance of values like manaki, as well as a collective work ethic. Meaningful participation. Meaningful participation was talked about by all the different participant groups and it was about giving Taiwan the opportunity to learn new skills and develop as people. And um, that was about exploring potential, giving Taiwan tests and challenges to build their confidence, sports, and the importance of safe spaces. They wanted their children to go to places 
where the well, the community stakeholders talked about it as well, but Fano wanted their children to go to places where they felt safe and where they wouldn't be influenced by negative influences like alcohol or drugs or smoking. And the community stakeholders, one of them talked about when you are designing a place in the community for Daihui, if you take into account other generations as well. He talked about how in their community they had a lot of teenage parents. And so if you're designing something for Taiohi to use, you also have to take into account that they may be bringing their children with them. This was taken by one of our Fano, and it's of the sport team she coaches. And sport was huge among all of the different participant groups. Talked about how <coughs> it can teach Taiohi to become caring and confident, and disciplined, hardworking, and cooperation. One of the community stakeholders talked about how through sport, Taiohi are participating with the wider community. The mother of this team talked about how much potential there are is for Māori for sport and about how, but how there are barriers, there can be barriers financially. And as a coach, she always goes out of way to take as many kids as she can to sporting events and find it so that try and break down those barriers for the Taiohi that she sees in her life. A lot of the Māori whānau talked about how sports teams can become like whānau for their taiohi and spending so much time and opportunities in the future for um, employment or just travel. Talked about they give the taiohi through sport head opportunity to travel within New Zealand as well as overseas. With education, it was about um, Taiohi and <coughs> potential. And under this theme, there was pathways of realising aspirations, the diverse pathways to education, high, the importance of higher levels of education, as well as community support. This photo was taken by one of our community stakeholders, and for him, the significance of this photo is um, the Taiohi here. They would, in literature, they might they'd be defined as need, which is not an employment, education or training. And he talked about the importance of the wider community providing support for them and ensuring that they don't slip through the gaps. Talked about um, the community initiatives within his community where Taiohi were going and cleaning like the waterways. And they said, it's not just about doing their job, it's about they have giving back to the community as well as they're learning about conservation. What about the importance of options such as trade training for this title here? And the last thing, or oh, I've been through it, <laughs> the last thing is um, indicators of adulthood. And under this, it's about diverse contexts and celebrating milestones and cultural connection. It's really about how there are these things that run across all the families, but then there are things that are unique to each of the families. This photo was taken by one of our Fano, and the significance of the chisel is um, when this Taiwan, when she turned 16, her father gave her a chisel for her birthday. And the reason she gave, he gave her a chisel was he was a carver and a carpenter and he wanted to give her something that was important in his life, it was his bread and butter. And he said to her that she was the chisel and he was the handle. And at this point in their life, they were carving out her life together. And he talked about how when you make a mistake in life, you, as in carving, you need to stop, figure out what's happened, and try and fix it and then move on. And he talked about when she turned 21, he was going to take out the handle and he was going to get it um, gold plated and he was going to put it in her key because he said when she's 21 hopefully she'll finish her tertiary education and he said how you know that will be the moment when he gives her that to the moment when he lets go of the handle and he trusts her to as an, as an adult. I mean, they're always going to be connected but that's, that was going to be a significant moment in both of their lives. the conclusion. So, sorry, no, to turn. So, based on our research, the key points around rites of passage for Māori Taiwai 
is it's about positive cultural identity. It's about collective community development. Because when the taiohi achieves, the community achieves. It's about developing their taiohi so that they understand the values and the skills that are important to the community. Um, it's about accumulated experiences. Past research, there's research out there on traditional Māori rites of passage. If you look at some of the international literature, it's about you know, our student ceremonies or rituals. But for Māori, it's about the accumulation of experiences over, over the whole lifespan. You know, what happens when their peer be is important to what happens to them when they're a taiohi and when they're older. It's about the accumulation of experiences over time. And it's about connection and belonging. It's about their relationships with others, with their whānau, their extended whānau, their communities. It's about giving them meaningful opportunities and it's about celebrating. It's about celebrating what they've achieved and what the whānau has achieved. Kia ora. <laughs>